when you hear that person on the other end, you can you can put yourself, so as a prospective client, you put yourself in their shoes, you hear, you know, what their thought process was, and it does feel you can you feel connected to that person. You're like, actually, I understand exactly what your struggles are because I'm I have the same concerns or I have the same hesitations. And that's very impactful. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. This is the second part of my interview with Nora Suddath. Would you suggest that people make a PDF as like a companion to the audio or like how do people usually do this? So we've seen there's three types of lead magnets that are working really well. And one is the workbook plus audio. So if you have that cheat sheet, that workbook, um, something that is a really valuable asset for your customers, having an audio companion that walks people through is huge. Think about how many times you've you've downloaded that workbook or that check or that checklist and you're maybe confused or you needed some insight or you needed an example or you needed a story to help reinforce a, um, a, a concept or maybe you just needed to know if there's a common area in that workbook where everyone gets stuck taking action or they have questions. Now with that audio companion, you're positioning yourself as, as an amazing guide to help them through that workbook. So the workbook in and of itself could still be valuable, but now you're taking things to the next level with, with the companion. So that's kind of, that's the first lead magnet that's working really well. The second one is that mini class or that audio series. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a series, but if you're a teacher, if you have something that you can teach or create a shift, whether that's a mindset shift, maybe it's helping someone have an epiphany through awareness or education of some sort, those types of of lead magnets are working really, really well. Again, whether that's multiple episodes broken out or if it's, you know, one episode or or follow-ups, that's working really well. And then the third category of lead magnets that are working really well are events. So if you think about challenges, summits, um, workshops, all of these events that people have, I know my schedule is busy. I'm sure yours is. And everyone, I don't know anyone that's not busy. Everyone listening to this right now is like, yeah, I, I signed up for the webinar. I signed up for the workshop. I signed up for the summit. And I had every intention of listening to every single speaker and life got in the way. Or I, I signed up knowing I couldn't make that time at seven o'clock on Thursday, but I was really hoping they sent me the replay. And then they did. And then how did you really watch the, that video replay? <laughs> Good point. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> And so what it's we're hard. it's hard to find the time <laughs> to sit and watch it. But if we put that content in a private podcast and made it a bazillion times easier to listen to that content, and we're seeing even these summit um, summit creators, the folks that are creating and hosting these amazing summits, and they have such great speakers. How many times are you logging into the members area and watching those videos compared to what if we put all the recordings for each speaker into a private podcast that you can listen to on the go? A lot of folks are are seeing that they're able to sell the recordings a lot easier when we're making it easier to consume them. So those those are the three big pieces, like three lead magnets, three categories of lead magnets that are working really, really well in audio form. Yeah. Are you seeing any particular companies that are using this to great advantage? Is there anyone that you could talk about that's a a success story as you know, far as this is concerned? Yeah, I I will say there's a few, um but I'll 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 talk about something we did that we we kind of did an experiment. We weren't sure if this was going to work, but this is what we do, right? We we run experiments. That's kind of what sure. business is. Well, we ended up creating a private podcast that had success stories from our users. And originally, we were thinking, you know what? There's so many different ways, and we're continuing to find new ways to use these private podcasts. 
What if we just highlighted our folks? And quite frankly, from a marketing standpoint, it's I can sit here and be like, yeah, it's awesome all day long. But it's like, you know what? Why don't you just listen to other people tell you yeah, what they're really- Yeah, it does much of an impact unless right. it's in their own words and they're exactly. saying Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So what we did was we ended up capturing these success stories in their own words and audio, and we put them all and compiled them into a success story podcast. And right now, when I went and looked at the numbers, it is our top listened to audio podcast, our private podcast across our wow. entire company. And it's beca- and everyone loves it. We keep getting messages about how it gave even um, new folks. They're like, oh, it, it, you know, I wasn't sure I was going to use it until I listened to the podcast. And I, I then I had 50 bazillion ideas on, on how to use a private podcast. And then we have existing members who have had success with their, you know, podcasting their course or podcasting their lead magnet. And now they're like, oh, but I just got 10 more ideas just listening to to these episodes. So, you know, even something like podcasting and creating a, a one private podcast that has success stories in different ways that your product or service has impacted your customers and what they truly thought about it. So, you know, was it really easy to use? What almost, you know, all of the great questions that make up amazing testimonials that resource in and of itself has helped us grow tremendously and also helped us with expansion as well. So we have folks that have upgraded to get more feeds or created more feeds and are you're kind of increasing, creating more feeds because of the idea. So that's one way that we've used it ourselves. And we're like, we don't know if this is going to work, but we should try it. And because we've made it easier to listen to, that that made a big difference. I will say the other thing we've seen a lot um, are folks that have had challenges. So with challenges, if you run a live challenge, it you typically see a drop off in engagement, right? From day to day, especially if you're you know show up at noon every Monday, Tuesday, every day, right? That that's difficult for a lot of professionals, depending on your audience. But what we've seen is typically you're on average. If you kind of, oh, you almost can lose 50% of your engagement day after day. It can be that high, depending on, you know, when things are and your audience engagement your content. It's really high. But what we're seeing is by creating a podcast version of the challenge, we're actually not seeing that drop off. We're actually seeing consumption grow. And at the, as a result of consumption growing, when you pitch on the, on the, at the end of a challenge or you invite folks into your next step or your next program, we've actually seen conversions, even for challenges that people have run three and four times, and they've had consistent conversion rates of maybe 10%. The, every time that they run that challenge, they're seeing conversion rates now jump to over 20%. Just, they didn't change anything other than adding this private podcast to make it easier for people to consume. It's it's a wow. game changer when when people actually consume that that content in terms of what happens you know with with the action steps and sales on the back end. So yeah, those are some great examples of some of the things that we're seeing. And everyone's like, "Wow, I just I never really thought about it." But yeah, it does make sense. You make it easier for people to listen. They actually do, right? Not rocket science. They actually do listen. And as a result, they take action. Yeah, yeah. I can see how it would work. Definitely. How do you get the people to do their testimonials in audio format? Do you have a place on like Hello Audio's website where you just ask them to do it through the website or do they do it on their own or... What's the usual process? We actually used apps like Voxer and WhatsApp. So we made it really easy instead of, because if you think we don't, uh, so at Hello Audio, we don't have yet the ability to record, but there's a ton of different apps that allow you to record your voice and all that stuff. So we provided questions in advance. So we kind of have, we gave them the document and actually this makes it easier because you don't have to schedule a Zoom call. People can do it on their own. They don't necessarily need to coordinate times and do this, and they don't have to dress up, so they don't have to be on camera, which is usually why a lot of folks don't necessarily want to do testimonials or that oh, kind yes. of stuff. Which I you know, I've, hear you I've been there, one. right? <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. definitely been there. But allowing <laughs> folks to just record. It, it does a couple things. It allows you to hear it in their own words, which is the really impactful, right? And you do get that with video, but it's just, this is a lot more likely if people are actually going to give you that testimonial and do it. But that way, by using apps that allow you to record in chunks um, and those types of things, you're able to download that audio. We actually use uh, an app called Descript. So we love Descript. We're actually uh, integration partners with Descript. So we edit everything them, yeah. in there. 
And then we can export directly to an episode into Hello Audio, which is, but we, we just use apps like that. That way they can contact us if they have any questions. They can re-record really quickly and it just makes the whole process, I mean, they can get everything done in less than five minutes, which is fantastic. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while, totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that too. Now back to the podcast. So you can actually download the audio from WhatsApp and, uh, and Voxer, as yes. I've, I've used both of those, and I never really understood that you could download that and put it on your, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, now I know. <laughs> yes, it makes it, it, once you know that, you're like, this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was, right? Yeah, so you can definitely use your phone, which I, yeah, that would yes. make things a lot easier for m most people, I would think, so a lot more likely that they'll do it, which is good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I do have some audio testimonials on my own website, both for my voiceover and for the podcast itself. And what I was doing was adding some of those audio testimonials right into the podcast, which is uh, so much fun to do. And I love hearing what people think in their own words. It's just yes. it's it's nice to hear that and much more authentic, I think, when they're using their own voice as opposed to you know, me just reading their testimonial, which I do a lot too. <laughs> sure. Well, and when you have a voice as great as yours, it sounds amazing <laughs> as well, right? So there is that. But you're right. Well, it does. You. There's, there's, yeah, it's amazing. And I do think that you're right. When you hear that person on the other end, you can you can put yourself. So as a prospective client, you put yourself in their shoes. You hear, you know, what their thought process was, and it does feel. You, can, you feel connected to that person. You're like, actually, I understand exactly what your struggles are because I'm, I have the same concerns or I have the same hesitations. And that's very impactful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that um, that's part of the reason why I think social audio was doing well during the pandemic because we weren't able to see each other. And yes. so hearing each other was a nice little stand in and even more than being on Zoom than being on the video it was a lot easier to just, you know, head into a room and, and yes. talk with people. So yeah, I'm still on Clubhouse. But um, unfortunately, I'm hearing things about it, maybe not surviving a whole lot longer. <laughs> and I would have never thought that. I mean, back yeah. when it first launched, I mean, Lindsay uh, was absolutely amazing with Clubhouse. She was on there all the time. You know, I think I was in in pandemic for a little while. I was, you know, doing digital learning and having fun with kids. And, and then we was, you know, I think that was actually when I first bought Netflix. I was like, well, if we're going to do it, let's we'll just do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like this is, but I'll tell you in those early days, it was amazing to be able to go in and connect with other people, even though, and it made it easier and took the pressure off of, of having to be on on video, which was a really nice break from Zoom because I was, you know, you and I, I mean, we were very seasoned Zoomers, right? Before this pandemic, it wasn't something. So it was kind of nice to have that break. But at that time, I would have never, if you would have said to me during that time that this won't survive, I would have never guessed because of how popular it was at the time. Um, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made that assumption that it would go away because of the 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 ways that people connect through through audio for sure. Yeah, I don't think that um, Clubhouse itself may not survive, but I think that social audio is here to oh, stay. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. You know, 
so yeah, it just it just depends on where that ends up falling after Clubhouse goes away. If it does, I don't I don't know. I'm still there weekly, but I'm there at a specific time and a specific date every week. So I have my discussions on Clubhouse in I have a club called The Power of Sound. So yes. I talk about all things sound Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can pretty much find me there at least three weeks out of the four. And and then on Thursdays, I have another discussion again from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern with fellow colleagues of mine who also have podcasts. So we have a, a room called Voices in Podcasting, VIP. So we just talk about where these things meet in the middle and we talk about both of them and it's kind of a party actually we have a lot of fun but uh but it's it's one of those things where i think if you go there and you're just there to waste time i mean you totally can but you'll yes. end up in some rooms that will be very heavy on the selling or very yes. self promotional or just about topics that are so out there that you're like why is someone putting this in public <laughs> Yes, I think I need um, to leave this room. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I need to be here. Exactly. Yeah. And then everyone that you know, knows that you went into that room, whether it was by accident yes. or not. Yes. <laughs> so, so there's all sorts of interesting things. But I know that um, uh, Twitter is actually not promoting spaces as much as they used to either. So I'm, I'm just wondering what the next thing is going to be, because I, I want to continue these chats because I think they're really useful. And it really does give you a great way to connect with people with your voice, which I think is super important. Like I have been on social media for a long, long time. I'm sure you have, too. And you can know people on social media like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, sure. whatever. And you watch their stuff. You've seen everything that they've been doing for the last, like, I don't know, 10 years, something like that. And then you jump on something with them in Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces or something that's social audio. And you can get to know them way better in the space of an hour yes. than you ever did watching their stuff for years on social yes. media. So that's the power of the human voice. It's definitely something that I think Hello Audio is is tuning into and and, um, you know, making work for the people who are going to put some effort into this. Yeah. And yeah, it's super important. I think that the, the human voice is one of those ways that we can really connect with each other on a deeper level. That's what sound does. You I know? agree. Well, and I love I, how you yeah. curate the room, right? So in your, you have an amazing network, you bring together your peers, you create these amazing conversations. And Clubhouse, at least right now, is a great way to be able to host Post, you know these these things, but what? But and I know you dropped some of these episodes in your in your podcast as well because yeah, I've had an opportunity to to listen to them, which is fantastic. Because you know folks aren't necessarily to be there, aren't able to be there live every time, and so by being able to be a fly on the room in some of these conversations that you know you are are facilitating, I think it gives folks an amazing opportunity to be part of the conversation, even if they're not there live. They're still like you said, they're still able to learn about folks and connect with folks just by listening to others voices and i think yeah. that's it. so yeah whether whether clubhouse itself as a as an app you know survives this i truly do i i agree i believe that that connection and that desire for connection and to be able to to listen to others and learn and be able to get to know them that's not going to go away anytime soon yeah, yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that this isn't the thing that maybe will be what the be all and end all is. But I think that they really did tap into something that people were wanting. So I, like you said, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. I think it's just what format will it take? Yes. But I, I think that it's very important for people to have audio only opportunities to connect with people. Because you know, like you said, the whole video thing, we're getting tired. <laughs> yes. I, and, you know, I, I know at least for me, when I'm on camera, I need to put makeup on. I need to make sure my yes. hair is good, you know, like all of this stuff. Right. So <laughs> so it's it becomes a much bigger deal and um, requires a lot more prep, let's say. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. And sometimes that's preventative. It, it actually for folks that, you know, I, I know I'm more introverted myself. And so 
Um, especially Very I would say so. earlier, yeah, earlier in my career, I think I was probably more hesitant to get on camera. Now I'm like, wait, where am I supposed to be? Okay, hop on and that, you know, you just kind of run with it. Wait, what am I speaking on? Got it. All right. But early on, it wasn't <laughs> You do that got easy. it, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm good. I'll just run with it, run with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, early on for folks that are amazing at what they do, they are experts in their field. But they haven't had that experience as digital creators. A lot of times starting as a video digital creator can be very difficult. It can be it can create a lot of anxiety and it it can just it can prevent folks from getting themselves out there. And so if I look at, you know, the medium that's the easiest for most people to start with, it's audio. You can talk it out. You can talk like you would be talking to your friend or your customer or a colleague. And it's you don't have to worry about copywriting and, you know, how did I phrase this and did I use the right words or to your point, makeup and hair and video editing and did I did I if I'm looking at the camera and I forgot what I was going to say, if you keep it more conversational, more, yeah. I think it, it levels out the playing field and more people who deserve to be heard will actually be able to create that content that will get out into the world. Oh, such a good point. Yeah, because people do deserve to be heard and, and you don't necessarily need to be seen to be heard. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I think that that is a very important point. I know that we're all dealing with a lot of stuff these days, so I particularly wanted to acknowledge those that have taken the time to leave honest reviews of this podcast, like Pamela Muldoon, who says, audio as part of your marketing strategy. I could not agree more with Jody's assessment that audio branding is the hidden gem of marketing. Now more than ever, how your brand sounds is becoming just as important as it looks and feels. The short, succinct episodes of this podcast, and I think she's referring to my solo episodes, are filled with nuggets, easy to listen to, that voice, thank you very much, and are perfect for binging. Nice work, Jody. Well, thank you, Pamela. It means a lot to me that you're getting some good information here. Thanks again for the review. And now, back to the show. I'm hoping that something comes along that uh, has similarities to Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces and that um, that something, whatever it is, ends up being a little more accepted in general. Yes. Um, because I think that, well, part of the problem, I think, with Clubhouse, at least, was that it um, it started out only a- on Apple. And yes. so that was a big part of the population that just didn't have access to it for a really long time. And I think that the FOMO was really what got them motivated in the beginning. And then when that FOMO wasn't there anymore, well, if that's the only reason that you went on the app, well, <laughs> that's not there anymore. It's true. <laughs> so, yeah. But with Twitter spaces, I'm finding I don't see the rooms. Like I, yes, I'm on I Twitter, but I just don't see them pop up. So it's like. Okay, I know it's here somewhere, <laughs> but I can't find it. No, the discoverability <laughs> so two is different, a lot more difficult. Yeah, there's like two different problems, I think, here that need to be solved with whatever comes next, hopefully soon. But I, I want to sort of ask you before we wind down here what you think the future of sound actually is. Where do you see this going into oh, the future? I, I, only, I only see this expanding. You know, everyone kind of, the you know, audio was was huge. I mean, back in the day, we would do teleseminars, right? There weren't these long, you know, multi-hour or multi-day Zoom conferences. We were doing them on the phone. This is what, you know, this is what we wrote. Now, it literally on the phone, like speakerphone, where before Bluetooth had headsets, we were attached to the phones as we were walking around the house, which is, you know, laughable now. But if you think about the way audio has been used in, in radio to be able to connect with folks, I think what is old is new again, and we're only going to see it expand. I think as, as people get busier, we have more parents, we have more multitaskers, we have more folks that are incorporating the need to consume information into their their day-to-day lives. And as as we do that, the need for that is is greater than it ever has been. And so I think the way that we're going to communicate it, and if companies don't make the shift or don't 
create opportunities to connect with their audiences with audio, I think they're going to struggle. I think they'll start to to see that their ability to reach is going to reach their audience is going to be impacted if you're if you're not making it that easy and seamless to incorporate your content into their day to days. I think it's only the beginning and it's going to expand from here. Yeah, I think the days of companies expecting you to pay your whole attention to everything that they put out there are long gone. Agreed. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. We are so far into the whole multitasking thing that it's, yeah. And, and audio just fits into those in-between spaces that we have available. So you best learn how to use it. <laughs> yes. And, and it's true. And videos is not going to be the place. No one's going to hit pause and then remember to come back to it. But if you're, if you're taking up space, what I truly think in terms of private podcasts, I think we're going to see that become the new inbox. I really do. I think that that's it's an it's an audio inbox that people you mm-hmm. can reach them there. I don't know about you, but I know my inbox is getting more and more crowded. My email inbox is getting more and more crowded. It's a lot more challenging to get people's attention in that inbox. Your headlines, your your subject lines need to be amazing or they need to already know you. But if you're able to establish this audio channel of communication with folks, you're dropping new episodes. It's very similar to dropping an an email into that inbox, except you have a dedicated communication channel open with that person. And I think we're going to see more and more people use private podcasts as that communication channel moving forward. Definitely. Yeah. And you can really get a sense of that authenticity, too. You can really understand who a person is when you hear them speaking. So yes. I think that that's a much more interesting and deeper way to connect with people in, in a lot of ways. Agreed. So what is uh, Hello Audio and what are you working on right now? Absolutely. So Hello Audio, uh, we're actually, we just finished in, at the time of this recording an integration with Zoom of all things, but we talk about Zoom a lot and we're on a lot of calls. And so we we're totally doing are. a lot of, right? We're still, that yeah. hasn't gone away. No, but now with not. Zoom... <laughs> At all. Um, With Zoom, we're actually able to, if you're recording to the cloud, you can log in and those recordings are right there and you can easily drop them into whatever feed. So if you have coaching call replays or if you had a team call and you want to drop that into a team feed for your internal team for folks to catch up on the replay if they weren't there, we're just making it a lot easier to integrate with workflows in that way, which is really exciting. Um, We're actually going to be doing some more workshops on the marketing side to help folks be able to reach their audience and be able to do things like challenges and and workshops and summits and those types of things. So we're continuing to add those features in to make it easier. And if you do want to check out Hello Audio, we're one of those SaaS tools that does not require you to put your credit card in up front. We kind of put our money where our mouth is and we have a a seven-day trial that is absolutely free, not just free putting your credit card, but no credit card required. Um, And I definitely would encourage you to check it out at helloaudio.fm. Wonderful. I was going to ask you how people can get in touch with you. That would definitely be it. Uh, Are you on LinkedIn and, and what other socials are you on? Yeah, so you can find me at Nora Suddeth on LinkedIn, also Hello Audio, and you can also connect with me personally at norasuddeth.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today, Nora. This was fantastic, and I learned a ton while talking to you. So yeah, thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having me. This is great. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.